<clears throat> Welcome back. Today we're just going to do a little bit of mostly fiddling around. As you can see, I've got the, uh, the Royal Enfield up on the lift. I'm ready to do the last little bit of work to that before I get it out on the road and test drive it, but I haven't actually started that yet. The, uh, the Project Norton has been running perfectly. I, I'm still kind of shocked at how problem free this bike has been so far uh the end of last week i was doing some tune-ups so uh i looked after the ignition timing it's still got the original set of points in it from brand new so uh anyway they're still in great shape the bike still works terrific with them on i just uh i uh cleaned and gapped the points uh, set the timing with a timing light actually a strobe light on this one on uh the old commando there the my old sweetheart that thing's running terrific but of course it's spring of the year so i do spring tune-ups on them and uh i also did the ignition timing on that one and uh everything was pretty good i actually did the timing statically on this bike rather than use the uh strobe light but i could have used the strobe light if i wanted to anyway mostly what i'm going to do today is uh i want to do a favor for a, a buddy of mine he did a favor for me last week with my uh with my kitchen stove and i really appreciate that and it's a karma thing what goes around comes around like uh he did something really great for me you know took some extra time and effort to to get a part that i needed and anyway it was not expensive at all so uh it's my turn to do a favor for him. Uh, I went up the road, and I have a good buddy who has a tire changer up there. I don't like changing these tubeless tires because they're so stiff on the sidewalls. But if you have a machine to do it, <clears throat> it makes all the difference. So he has a machine, and anybody that comes here with tubeless tires, I usually send them up to him. And he's a really nice guy. I really like going up. Sometimes I'll just go up there and visit him. Anyways... He put a new tube and put the tire on there and balanced it for me and everything. So that's all set to go. But uh, before I give this back to the owner, you can see that these, uh, these poor spokes are in pretty rough shape. Now, the correct way to look after that issue would be just to put new spokes in it. But for now, and I find this works a lot of the time, if you don't have the time or the money to want to put new spokes in it you just want the bike to look half decent then i got a little trick that i'm going to show you with these you can clean these off of course but they'll just rust up on you again so uh there's a little a little paint trick that i have and i'll i'll show it to you meanwhile i've got the bolts out of the brake so i'm gonna if i can get that to come off <laughs> it's hard to do with one hand I'm just going to reach in here with my other hand while I hold the phone. There, that makes it easier when you can work with two hands or something like that. And anyway, I'm going to set that here. But uh, what I'm going to do first is I'll, is I'll take my brass brush to these. You can also use, uh, what was I thinking of? Uh, damn it, why do words escape me lately? I hope I'm not getting mental health problems or anything but uh, anyway i'm just going to clean these up you could use steel wool that's the word i was looking for you could use steel wool too if you wanted but i i find a brass brush i'm just going to get most of the rust off of here and then i'm going to show you a quick little trick that i use with paint and a brush and i'm just going to brush paint those spokes and if all goes well they should end up looking like uh well looked after spokes that haven't rusted and they won't rust because they got paint on them so anyways uh let me get to work on this we'll we'll sort of call this a, a partly before i'll show you again what i get after i'm finished brushing them off and then we'll take some paint to it gone outside the old picnic table got my little wire brush anyway i got most of the uh the loose rust off of these spokes I think somebody had cleaned them up previously, but they didn't put anything on them to stop them from rusting. 
mean, even a coat of wax would have been helpful. But anyway, I am going to now paint each one of those spokes. And it's a little bit time consuming, but uh, the results I think will be pretty impressive. Okay, this is one of my dirty little shop hacks that I use quite often on spokes. That's about 50 50 mix of foam paint and black uh, gloss enamel. You mix them together and what you get is something that looks uh, similar to gunmetal. You can make it lighter or darker depending on how much black you put in it. But I like to say I find 50-50 seems to work good. And where it is a thin paint where it comes out of the spray can it goes on quite rapidly and flows well into all the little cracks and grooves. So uh, I've started painting a few spokes there and uh, I'm going to continue on around. I'll Take, I'll take track of the time just to see how long this takes me. Now, that's the spokes done on this side of the wheel. When it gets time to do the nipples, I'm just going to do the nipples with that straight uh, Rust-Oleum chrome. But uh, next thing to do, I need to turn that wheel over. And I'll paint the spokes on this side. And that should be just about, just about done. Okay, I got the disc back on there. I have to go back in the shop and tighten those uh, those retaining bolts up. But the uh, disc is back on. Spokes are all painted. You know, it's not as good as uh, as new spokes would be, but it's a heck of a lot cheaper. And if you got an hour and a half to to clean up your spokes and do a little bit of painting out in the sunshine on the picnic table on a reasonably decent day then that's the way to go anyway like i said i'm going to go tighten up those uh those bolts and this will be ready to go back to my buddy right well that's enough fiddling around with other stuff the Royal Enfield, I gotta change those back shocks. Plus, I think Charlie might have took the nuts off the other side of the top bolt at some point. But anyway, time to get on with that. That should not be a big, huge job. So, uh, there's the hag on set that he got to replace them. Hopefully, they'll fit. Okay, what do we got here? I gotta apologize for the state of. The workbench, I really shouldn't be doing this without cleaning up first because it's really messy out here. But anyway, after I do this, I'm definitely going to have to clean that up. Anyhow, I should clean the whole garage. It hasn't had a good sweeping out in quite some time. Anyway, back to the shocks. Right. This is the one that I just took off the left-hand side of the infield. And these are the two new ones. Now, uh... The new ones are the same length, so that solves any questions I had with that. And the old ones are about five eighths of an inch longer, eye to eye. So that's going to drop the back end of the bike down by a little five eighths. I'm not thrilled about that, but uh, five eighths isn't that much, so they should be usable. I'm going to put them on. It might be a little harder to get the bike on the center stand. But I don't think that's something that Charlie's going to be too worried about anyway. So uh, I'll get these on the bike and uh, see how they work. Hey, things are coming, but nothing is ever as easy as you think it's going to be. Uh, let's see, I got the first shock in there. I had to pass a 3 8 inch, where is it, a 3 8 inch drill through... This hole right here in the frame because the holes were so misaligned that uh, I couldn't get the bolt through. Even after trying to line them up with an alignment punch, they still wouldn't come. And another interesting thing that I noticed is the actual bolts that go through the top of the shocks are 3 8 You know, that's the size of the frame too. Well, look, remember how I said this hole was bigger than this hole? And that's quite true. Well, look. 3 8 just drops right in there perfectly. Put in here. That's closer to half inch. 
or seven sixteenths maybe. Yeah, seven, probably seven sixteenths. I haven't actually measured it, but going by how sloppy that hole is. <laughs> anyway, so time to get the second shock in there. At least I know what I'll be up against after having gone through it on the first one. And again, nothing was without its surprises. Uh, there's a little spacer that they have that goes right here between the bolts the tab for the seat goes down over the shock bolts and so i had to make up another spacer because the bolt was removed from there and the spacer was missing so anyways new spacer so now i'm going to try to stick the shock on that other side see if it actually fits okay charge on the battery's getting a little bit low let's see if i can get a clip here of uh an old fat bull guy trying to install shocks. Anyway, uh, I've got some dielectric grease, which is, happens to, make, to be based on silicone. So this, these things don't actually touch the rubber, but silicone's a good thing to use. Well, actually, it does touch the rubber up here. Because I'm going to be putting that between the top part of the forks. So, a little more of that grease. Come on. Tube's, tube's getting pretty much squeezed out, but I'll get it. Alright. Now, shouldn't have too much trouble getting the lower one on. Getting the upper one on, though, might be a little bit more of a struggle. We'll see why again in a minute. Okay, I put a little bit of, of grease in that uh, in between the tabs here where, where the top of that shock slides in as well because I got a feeling it's not just going to slide in. It's probably going to give me a little bit of a harder time. So, there's my alignment punch that I was talking about in the last clip. Handy thing. Much better than the screwdriver. Now, I have to lift up to lift and get the weight off the other shock. And hopefully, 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 I can get this in here without too much trouble. Oh, there's my plastic hammer. I don't want to hit those wires, so... Let's see if I can get this in here. No, oh, I think it started. It's, uh, I say I'm very worried about getting those darn wires there. All right. I might need to open up that, that gap in the frame just a little tiny bit. Because over the years it's gotten squeezed, so let me see if I can. Of course, my pry bar is nowhere to be seen when I want it. Oh dear, I might have to resort to uh, brute force and stupidity. And here comes stupidity holding the screwdriver. All right, I'm just gonna put this between the tabs of the frame back here and just get that a little bit of a nudge out. That should help me get that, uh, that shock into place a little bit easier. There. And I'll just give her a tap back just like that. Now I use my alignment punch to get those holes lined up. And if I need to, just take a little bit of weight off of the jack there. I'm going to come down a little further. And I think you remember me mentioning having to pass a hole, a drill through the holes in the frame in order to get the other side to line up. I don't know, but I might have to do the same darn thing here. Now, let's have a look here. No, they're not even, not even close to aligning. I'm trying to punch a little bit. Maybe I can get them to... Massage them up into place a little bit. 
I hate doing, but over the years, the stress and the strain and all that sort of thing, it gets on these things when you ride them. Things move, things bend a little bit, alignment alignment comes and goes as it pleases, so uh, I'm going to have to just put that drill through there and make sure that that Racket isn't in the way. Now that should do it. It wasn't an awful lot, just enough to, to hold it up from passing through. There. Uh, just tap that bushing down on there and I can put the bolts on and all will be right. Right, now to get this seat on, uh, I just wanted to share something with you about uh, the way the, the mounting arrangements. They've taken the typical BSA sliding front mount and created this little bracket around it. They could have made it that they could still use the slide-in part. That's what I would have tried to do. But anyway, they've bolted it firmly into there. And this drops over the frame. And bolts into a handy little lug that's underneath. That might have been for a, I don't know, a tank mount or, a, or some other thing. Anyway, uh, and then, of course, the tabs on the back just slide down over the shock bolts here. So that, uh, I thought that was a kind of a, a neat little something or other that I'd share with you. Meanwhile, let's see if I can get everything to line up and drop this seat down in position. It's kind of hard to do with all these, all these washers and nuts in the way, but not impossible. Not so difficult that I decided I had to do another separate video on. Now, is that down on this side? Yep. Down on that side, down on that side. And let's put that bolt through there. If we can. Might be a job for the alignment punch again. Yep. That's not quite aligned, so I'll slip that bolt out of there a little ways. I'll get that to align a little better. That's just about there now. Anyway, yeah, I'll tighten up those bolts now and uh I think I'll give the whole thing a, a good cleaning up. Plus, I think I mentioned I have to uh, put a liner in the tank because we're not sure if that holds fuel or not after all these years of sitting around. Okay, I've been wiping away at the dust and the dirt on this thing. You know, 30 years of storage in a dusty old garage, things tend to build up. But, uh, you know, I got the engine cylinder head cleaned up pretty decent. This uh, bracket, I'll lay a little bit of black paint on that before I'm done, but uh, anyway, things are tidying up slowly but surely here. I gave the primary case another little polish. Uh, the headlight, well, I cleaned it up, but it's, it's pretty badly pitted. Charlie actually did leave me a new bucket, but I don't have a rim, so I may order a new rim. For that as well and put the bucket on there just to make that look nice but I got the that alloy fender polished up and the forks cleaned up and even the front rim cleaned up really well got most of the rust off it and all the the dust and crap uh, 
I'll get in between here at, at those fins with a, I think just a nylon brush ought to do a pretty good job of uh, just getting that dust and crap off of there. But uh, it's starting to look half decent. Um, I'm waiting for a Caswell kit for that uh, for that gas tank. And there's a few little other things I want to do to this before I get it out for a test drive. But uh, it's getting closer all the time. And I, I don't charge for, for cleaning up people's bikes unless they hired me to do that. But, uh, I mean, I don't want to see this thing go home looking like a, like a dirty old back of a school bus at the end of February or something like that. So anyway, it's, uh, it's cleaning up nice and it's going to look pretty decent when it goes out of here. So in the meantime, I think I'll wrap this little video up. That's, that's long enough for this one. And I'll carry on a little bit more with this next week and any other little projects I happen to have going here. So thanks for watching. If uh, if you want, you can click like and subscribe. And uh, anyway, we'll get on with the job.